it's me little Frenchie and today we're gonna be making some snowflake cards we're gonna start with um, a 9 by 12 sheet and then what I do is I cut them down into smaller cards so the supply list is we're gonna go through the paints today um, I've got cobalt blue um, French ultramarine and filial blue just know that you can actually use whatever blues you have whatever paints you have it doesn't have to be like a really super high quality I mean you're just gonna be putting a lot of paint down um, the brush you use also really doesn't matter I used a size number eight round and that's a pretty good size so um, whatever a bigger size brush will work for this because you're gonna be going over a lot of space on your paper and then adding the color later on now the one thing that you might have a hard time finding is um, this is liquid masking tape in a pen form and I love it and if you get um, masking liquid I suggest doing this over um, getting like the tube and getting your paintbrush and um, with the possibility of ruining your paintbrush um, this is just like an, uh, an eraser nub it's kind of like more hard than eraser it's almost like rubber and you use it to um, remove the the masking fluid now if you have the like in in the container I don't love it just make sure that um, you don't ruin your paint brushes and you dip them and some um, soap before you um, put it on your paper um, so I hope you enjoy the snowflakes because they're quite pretty when you do them um, happy painting everyone bye every single day I'm gonna and today I've decided that we are going to try to do some snowflake cards that you can just send out to your friends really easy really simple um, but really fun now today I have decided to try something new I'm using a whole 9 by 12 sheet and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one painting we're gonna do it like all one big painting and then we're just gonna cut it so you have four cards so this makes it a really fun easy painting to do and then you end up getting four four little postcards that you could send out to your friend or you can even cut them down and use them as gift tags if that's something you would like to do or if you just want a snowflake scene um, there's always that so I have a couple tools that we're gonna be using um, that you I suggest you get now um, I have this um, art masking fluid um, it's really good it's a pen um, sometimes it comes in you know, the Windsor Newton, Newton one which is like like this you open it up and it has you have to have a paintbrush now you're gonna have to use a cruddy paintbrush and dip it a tiny bit in like some dish soap and put it in here and then paint what you're trying to to do so the reason we use this is because to get this white space that isn't paint it's negative background in in the painting so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this down and then paint over it and then we'll lift the masking fluid off and that's how you get get the reverse white on here so just so you remember in watercolor we always do light to dark now this is where the fun part is comes in and I'm gonna use the pen just because it's easier and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw snowflakes all over this now this one you kind of got to push down and this is a newer one and it'll do the um, masking fluid and um, most snowflakes have six six stems in it or whatever you want to call it um, that's how they look and I was looking up snowflakes now I just want you to do whatever you feel great like put a loop on here you can just do whatever snowflake you want here and there but let's try to cover the whole sheet so um, I hope this is something that you're interested in trying doing remember it doesn't have to be perfect sometimes snowflakes aren't perfect and it's just um, s something that you can make so I'm just gonna I'm just kind of going in here and 
putting whatever I feel the need to put on here. Um, what I like about this masking fluid is, is that it's blue and then when you um, are done, um, you can still see it. Like now, some of the other ones, like the Windsor Newton one, it's kind of clear. And so with that, the problem I have with that is sometimes you can't see it. I've, I've had better luck with this masking fluid than any of the other ones, um, just the way it is. And you can see my snowflake is a little bit crazy, a little bit off. And um, just so you know, if you don't like your snowflake, you can let it dry and lift it up. Um, the only problem with this, I find, is that you have to have patience. Now, I'm going to do an eight one, and I'm just going to go in and put in just a real simple one. Just little, like, little arrows. And I'm just going to put these all over. You know, you can look up snowflakes that maybe you want to want to kind of put in your painting you know wherever you want I, I think you should try and I just look at my other snowflakes that I have to kind of see like hey which one do I like and you can practice these like um, on a separate sheet of paper or you can draw them out and see what it is that you like and, and that's kind of the key is just kind of have fun with it and when you make this, nobody's going to be like, oh, look at that snowflake. I can't believe that she gave me that as her snowflake. Nobody nobody ever says that. Most people are just happy that you thought of them and decided to give them a homemade gift. And this is just if you want to have snowflakes in your house. You know, like a picture of snowflakes. I've heard a lot of people say they love snowflakes. Now, I come from the land of snowflakes and so in the Midwest and I'm not particularly fond of snow snow I think snowflakes are beautiful but I don't like snow I live in the Pacific Northwest now where now we just mostly have rain in this in during the um, season and what I like about that is you don't have to shovel rain and as a kid like we were always having to, I'd have to go out and help shovel, hated it. I'd do whatever I can to get out of it because it's kind of exhausting shoveling. It's just not, it's not, not the funnest. It's tiring. You get cold and wet. So everybody says they like snow until you have to actually work in it. As you can see, my snowflake is like just totally like way out there. Crazy. Just kind of looks like it's, it's not even honestly I'm to the point where it's like hey I'm just doing this to show you and you guys can decide later on what kind of what it is what kind of snowflakes you want um, when I was looking up snowflakes some snowflakes are kind of harder to draw than others and um, I just just kind of wanted to just have fun I've, I've wanted to do the paper cutting of snowflakes those are fun. I used to have a, like a calendar of them. I just never did them all. I got kind of sidetracked in life. But they're pretty cool. I liked those. And then I've also, I've seen um, other ones. And you just kind of, I'm going to do three. Remember, I always say odd numbers. That's what I like. Personally, what I like. And so... That's what I'm going to do. I'm just go on here. So I'm going to pause this video, finish, finish all my snowflakes, let this dry. So the thing about masking fluid is you have to let it dry before you paint on it. If you don't, the masking fluid is going to get on your brush, ruin your brush. It's going to get into your paints and you're just going to be really frustrated. So that being said, make sure it's dry. This is where the patience part comes in. So I'm pause this, finish up my snowflakes, and then I'll show you how to do the rest of this. All right, I'm back everyone, and here are all my snowflakes, they've dried. Um, I usually, when I test, I go to the very last place that I went, or a place that's kind of thick, and you can see it's not on my finger, and that's kind of how I test, and so it's all dry, it might be a little tacky, and that's okay, you just want to make sure <clears throat> when you're done, you don't want to clean out your brushes. As you can see, I just put a few little tiny snowflakes here and there throughout. 
just because I feel like the big ones. Do whatever you want. My snowflakes are not perfect by any means. They're not measured right. I just went with my eyes. Sometimes they got a little too big, like over here. Um, over here, this one's a little bit lopsided. And you know what? This is for fun. This is relax. And um, you have fun with it. Now, if you feel like you need your snowflakes to be perfect, by all means, go ahead and go for that. But they don't have to. No one's going to care when you give this to them. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the whole sheet wet. I have a bigger brush. And I could probably use a bigger one. I probably have a bigger one somewhere. Um, and what I'm doing is just wetting. Wetting the whole paper. Now, it's kind of hard to see unless you sit at an angle where you have a light. You can kind of see the wetness of the paper. And you'll notice as you when you go to put it in your color... Um, you'll notice when it doesn't sort of spread out. I'm gonna use three different blues with this. I'm gonna use a Phaleo blue, cobalt blue, and French ultramarine blue. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just, I've already got my palette wet. I don't know if you can kind of see. Okay, oops. Here are my um, blues. And I'm just gonna pick up the paint and just kinda go where I want. Now, this is a flat brush. I'm not sure I like this brush. So I'm gonna, I, you know, I have a thing for my round brush. So I'm gonna get my my biggest round brush. I do have a mop brush, I just haven't used it for this video, but I'm gonna go in. And sometimes your paper is going to get um, dry before you can even get paint on there, and that's okay. So I'm just gonna spread my paint wherever I feel like I want it, and it doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, I'm just putting paint on here however it just flows. I'm just kinda not going any sort of methodical i'm just putting paint on here and this is my cobalt this is probably the lighter of the blue three blues that i have and if I pick up more water and kind of spread it out now i'm going to go to my french ultramarine which is a bit of a darker blue and as you can see it's darker and i'm going to try to fill in all the spots where i didn't get any paint and just keep picking it up and pushing it along and you're going to move it as you go along too picking up water I'm gonna pause this please hold on all right I'm back my kids came home from going for a walk so I'm gonna just go through here and keep putting the blue on wherever I feel like there's space missing paper kind of gets dry as you're doing this um, you just kind of add more water to kind of push it out I'm gonna take more French ultramarine blue kind of sprinkle it now I want this paper to be moist I don't I don't want it to dry out that's part of what we're gonna be doing here now, I have a little sprayer so if that happens it's just you know like the dollar store or whatever and you can just oops, just spray and you can make sure your palette your paper stays stays wet now I'm gonna keep putting my colors on here because I want it to be pretty saturated it's easier when you have a smaller sheet of paper and then if I feel like I'm missing some cobalt I could put some cobalt you see the difference um, in the video um, now I'm gonna take pick up my phaleo blue this is the blue that's just really vibrant I mean it's really intense it's a very intense blue and so when you use it use it sparingly because um, it's kind of crazy now I'm just going through here and a little phaleo and just making sure it gets mixed in everywhere because I don't want my paper dry because I'm gonna show you a trick you might have used this when you were a kid you know, doing watercolors for the first time. Um, but you're, I'm gonna put salt in here and let it dry. What the salt does is it sucks up the pigment of the paint. And I don't know if you can see this in here, but do you see what it does to the paint? It kind of pushes it, it makes it look snow-like. You can do that for desert scenes, sand scenes, whatever you feel that you wanna do it. But I'm going to try to cover this with as much paint as possible because What's going to happen is the salt is going to pick up that paint when, when we put it down. So that's why I wanted to keep it wet when I'm doing this. And so, as you can see, my paper lumps. That's why where the better quality paper comes in when you're soaking it with paint. Because if you don't, you're literally, your, your, your paper is just going to just start ripping and tearing. So I've got salt here. And I'm just going to sprinkle it literally all over the painting. Yeah, you like my snowman? <laughs> I change them with the holidays. I'm kind of nerdy like that. 
And I'm just gonna, now don't get it in your palette because it will suck it up and it'll go to your painting, but I'm just gonna put it, you can kind of see where it's wet still and where it's not. Now this is where you come in. Now this is where we're gonna let it dry. So I'm gonna pause the video again. I'm gonna dry it with my hair dryer. Um, not my hair dryer, but you know, my dryer. And then you're gonna see, and what happens is right now it's kind of bubbly. It's, you see that? When I dry it, it starts to kind of flatten itself. Not completely, you can always, I've seen people iron their paintings, but we're just put under a book for a while and it'll get flat again. So I'm gonna pause this while I dry this and then you'll see what it looks like. All right, everybody, I'm back. I'm back, so now what we're gonna do is I'm going to brush off all the salt on here because we're gonna continue to paint and it can be, I'm just gonna take a like a, just a very dry paper towel and just brush all the sand off. Please do not reuse the sand and eat it later on. It's got paint. I don't know if you can see this, but the look up here. Do you see how the paint or the salt is blue? Because it sucked up the, the paint. Do not eat it. Not good for you. I mean, I'm just letting you know. You can see it. Look at how it just lifted the color and almost made like this snow crystallized sort of pattern on the paper. It's just beautiful. I love it. When I was a kid and did watercolor, I didn't have high quality paints. This was some, one of my favorite things to do when I would watercolor, is to use the salt on the watercolor. It just makes this beautiful design. Now on that one I put a lot of salt over there. Um, but do you see how it just lifts the color and just makes this snowy, kind of frosted like your windows when it's cold out and there's dew. Some of you who live in warmer climates might not know about that, but it leaves this beautiful pattern. Now, I feel like it's still a little bit boring. So, um, as many of you know, if you've watched my videos, I have a thing for splattering paint on, on my stuff. And so I'm gonna take those same colors that we used while, we, uh, while our um, masking fluid is still on here, and I'm and I'm going to take get get it pretty heavily get some get some heavy pigment on my brush like really heavy and then I'm just gonna go in here and I'm just gonna splatter all over all over the paper wherever I can just pick up as much paint as I can and just splatter now I'm gonna warn you this can make a mess outside of your paper, like look, it's getting on my hands. When I do this at lunch, you know, I always have to clean up the table that I'm sitting at. Um, it's not too hard to clean up. Just make sure if you're if you're eating with your coworkers that you don't do it in their food. Eating paint is never good. Um, but it cleans up pretty well. I've never had too many problems with cleaning up. So right now I'm using the cobalt blue, light to dark, and I'm just splattering the paint kind of wherever I want. And sometimes, you know, I also find that if you're struggling and you have, you know, you don't want it, is to put a napkin, put napkins down around or even paper towel, whatever you have, or paper. Like let's say you have something on your painting that you don't want to get splattered. I usually use a scrap of paper and put that over. That usually works pretty well. Now I'm gonna do the French ultramarine blue. And I've got some water on here and I'm just gonna keep Getting like a highly pigmented on my my brush. I'm just gonna. Do you see how it's darker than the cobalt? It might be harder to see in this video, but it's dark. It's just a smidge darker. And I, I like it when I'm mixing colors. It's one of my go-to. The French or the regular ultramarine. I know I went to get some more paints yesterday for Daniel Smith. I can. They have been out of burnt umber for over a month. I don't. And Daniel Smith and I started looking at other brands and finally I really like Daniel Smith talking to the worker because I'm not a professional in paints um, I'm not a professional by any means when it comes to painting I'm just learning I'm still learning every day and she told me the process that Daniel Smith uses versus the other paints and Daniel Smith is very high pigmented so what I like about them it also some of the paint high, more higher quality paints um, use honey instead of um, other types of binders and and it spreads so this cobalt that I'm using is actually a different brand and what I don't like about it is it doesn't 
work well with others and she told me it's because they use other colors to make that color where Daniel Smith usually just uses that one pigment and so that's why you can blend a lot easier. So now I'm going to take the Phaleo and kind of spread this um, wherever I feel like I need to and then we've got to let this dry. Now I'm going to go in and do my last um, it's not snow or a snow scene without snow so I'm gonna come in here and it's kind of hard to see I've got white and you don't have to do this and some artists or you know art places won't consider your art uh, a completely watercolor if you use white paint As you can see white paint I don't care this is just for fun I'm not trying to win any awards here and so I'm just going to splatter my white everywhere, and if it just mixes in with my blues, oh well. It's, it'll be fine. It'll look pretty. Nobody's going to scrutinize the paint splatters that you do. You know, it's just, it's just something nice to do and something fun, homemade. I'm just going to keep splattering wherever I feel like it needs a splatter. And then I'm going to pause again because I'm going to, I don't have patience because you don't want to sit here and watch my paint dry. So I'm going to take my um, heat gun again and I'm going to um, just go through, dry the paint, and then I'll show you the lifting. So hold on. All right, I'm back again. <laughs> so um, there's two ways that you can um, lift, lift all this masking fluid. You can do it with your finger. Now you can see as you paint, you're going to get paint on your fingers. Um... I got this sort of like an eraser but at the artist store you can see that I use it a lot um, and I take it and it just kind of lifts it now when you're doing this be gentle because if you're not gentle it's gonna lift the paper if you're not gentle so what you do is you're gonna go through and you go in and lift it now if let's say you don't have this tool um, that I'm using right here. You can just use a regular eraser. I like the white erasers. They're also m much more more gentle on um, watercolor paper than a regular eraser on just a regular like pencil that you'd use um, every day. Um, but it takes a little bit longer. And, um, this actually lifts up the gummy, as you can see. So you just go through and you just kind of go over all of it. And just start lifting and that's kind of what I'm doing right now you will eventually get the little gummy that we placed on there on the on the edge here you can see it's kind of and you'll get that so you just go through and you just start lifting and um, just be remember the key is being gentle and being patient sometimes with watercolor I, I have to learn to be patient because I tend to want to do things quickly I think it's because my brain works like that it just works quickly <clears throat> and to just take the time to experience what I'm doing and enjoying it and taking my time just do you need to do that too when you're painting sometimes it's just all about gently doing something going back and through and and just enjoying the process and that's what sometimes art is about is just enjoying the process of doing art so I'm just going to go through and lift all the masking fluid. And you can see my snowflakes are starting to pop. Sometimes you have to go a different way to get it all off. And sometimes I find if it's not coming off completely, I go in with this brush and I go in and I, it helps. Not all the time, but sometimes it does. And the, if you were to invest in masking fluid, my suggestion is to get the pen versus the bottle. Uh, that's just my own personal experience. I've struggled with the bottle and have as much, you know, I was, it was able to get the job done. I really like the pen. It's more precise. I'm able to do a lot more with it and not feel like struggle you don't ruin any of your brushes I've ruined several brushes using just out of the bottle which is never fun I mean it wasn't my best brushes but you still as an artist you don't want to lose any of your equipment making one painting I did get a nib a nub which is like um like a a wooden sort of tool to uh 
um, use, and I found I didn't, I still struggle even with that as a, you know, using it. I mean, maybe I'm not using it right. You know, I can always learn new things um, with my art when I'm learning and doing art. I can learn just like you when watching my videos. So I'm going to go through. You see how that kind of whitened up when I went in over it? So if you see any of your snowflakes that really need some whitening, just go back over them again and you'll lift the color. You see, sometimes it's just a little bit heavier. And I found when you do use the uh, hair dryer, sometimes it can make it a little bit more difficult to do stuff. So just be careful. Now remember, better paper when you're doing something that has so many layers and so many soaking on this. Do not use your cheap paper with this. You need a good paper. At least that one that's going to withstand layers and layers of water on it. Now if you're not going to do a lot of water, like my wreath painting that I did previous to this one, it might not matter as much if you use a cheaper, but when you do something like this, it will matter because you are going to be so frustrated and so annoyed by the time you're done with your painting, you might just give up watercolor altogether, and that is not what I want to see happen to you. I actually gave up watercolor for a long time because I didn't have the right tools. Now, I don't use the most expensive, but I try the cheaper stuff, and you just have to figure out what can I do with the cheaper and what can I do with the more pricier. Now, of course, with more pricier stuff, you're going to be able to do a lot more than something with not as pricey. All right, and I'm going to finish this one up. And I feel like it's pretty good. Now you can go in there and feel like if there's anything that's on there, like right here, if you like, you can take it. And let's go on. There comes a the fun part. This is where, hey, all that effort. So now a trick. When you're removing tape, you're going to want to get as close like this as possible because if you just rip it up, um, it will rip your paper. I use painter's tape from the dollar store. It's cheap, so as you can see, like, down here, when I use the hair dryer to dry, it lifts, it pushes the, the tape up, which makes it easier um, when you're removing, but it's a problem when you still need to do more paint painting. And so you see, I just take this off. This one up here. Now, sometimes I can, if depends how rough I am with the... The, the tape, I can use it for more than one painting. I'm not going to do that for this one because there was a, a lot of heavy wetness on here. And I'll just usually take the other side and use it. And so just make sure that as you're going, I move. And then we're going to do this last side over here. If you can, it's kind of hard to see. You see how, you could see the little edge here. Where, oh, see, and there we go. That's a perfect example of what you don't want to happen. When you start to see that happen, you want to get closer to the paint, um, painter's tape, and then lift it. Now here's the fun part. Now you have this big snowflake sheet of paper, and what we're going to do is cut it down. Like, this is the part where, you now you can cut it down any way you want. If you're using the 12 by nine um, size paper like I am. I'm going to cut it into fours and then I'm going to cut off these edges. So what I'm going to do is I usually, when I tend to do this, I always cut it four and a half first. And I have a circuit, like this little circuit cutter, pretty easy. Some of them had it forever. Get one if you feel like it. Um, you need to cut paper. This is what I use to cut my watercolor paper all the time with. Works great. And then we're going to put it in here. Now we're going to do six and six. Um, I've tried doing more than one sheet of watercolor in here with this. It doesn't work very well. Got to just do one sheet at a time. I'm sure they have other ones that do more than one sheet. I don't really need them. I'm kind of frugal. I try to be save as much money as possible. Now I'm going to just go in and I'm going to just cut off these little edges that we use to hold on. Um, you don't have to use the painter's tape when you're, pa when you're doing this painting. However, if you are not very experienced 
I do not suggest doing it just for the simple fact is it can be frustrating when your paper is lifting up while you're painting. It can just be frustrating. Let me just tell you right now, it's, it is. So, <clears throat> I'm just going to go through and finish cutting all these edges off. You see, like, when I put the painter's tape on, I'm not very accurate. And so I just have to cut enough where it just gets all the white off of the edges. I'm go through. Now, since these are just, like, little Christmas cards I'm going to send out just for fun and, you know, postcard, like, hey, Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays if my friends don't celebrate Christmas or, you know, Happy Hollies. Snowflakes are pretty good sending out to people who you don't know what their religious affiliation is. You, know, you just tell them happy holidays or I mean you just have happy winter. I want to cheer you up. You know, um, winter can be kind of a season that can be rough because where I live it gets dark pretty early and I don't like it. It can kind of make you like depressed and sad. I like this. As much as I'm not an outdoorsy person, I still like the sun every now and then. <laughs> so do my last one. Put it on here. Make sure. So I'm lining up this line right here with the white line to make sure that I get it all. You know, and it's all like trial and error playing around with your stuff. Now, here we go. I have made four cards in probably like a half an hour. Um, maybe a little bit longer because I had an air dry, but. Here are the cards that you have. Now, um, if you want and you want to make them as like, you just want one and you want to put it like, uh, you have a gift tag, you can cut this in half again. So this one is about six inches. So I'm gonna cut it on the three. You can totally do that. Look at that. Now you have some gift tags that you can, oh look, I didn't even cut them on the right size, but nobody's gonna know because you're not gonna use them in the same spot. So you want to try making some snowflakes and have some fun with all these homemade cards that I have um, just by having some fun with some blue paint and some masking fluid and I hope that you decide to make this video and if you do please give it a thumbs up as I love it when you give me a thumbs up any comments suggestions that would be great and make sure you hit the subscribe button down below all right happy painting everyone and have a happy holiday no matter what you celebrate and even if it's just Eh, let's get rid of the winter blues. Bye, everybody. Have a good one.